wish that we could be together today, but it just wasn't going to be the safest plan for us to all drive out there together. But uh, thankful to have this space where we can um, be with you in, in this specific way. Uh, but what I want to do uh, in this short time that we have together is, one, just show you some of the fun that our families had over this past week during the snow week. And, um, and then I want to make a couple of announcements of what's coming up for our church and give you a quick sermon thought um, that I wasn't able to share with you last week. And then a quick prayer practice that I'd love for you to practice together today as we close out our time together. But first, take a look at some of the fun that our families had over this past week. And the background song will be from our own worship leader, Chris Allen and Zach Smith, and their band called Stop Gap Solutions, uh, and the project that they're working on right now, and their song called Won't Find Me. But take a look at this video. for sending in uh, your videos and all those things like that was so much fun uh, and again we hate we can't be together but what a gift that you had such a great time this week and uh, again thanks for sending that stuff in a couple of announcements uh, just three one um, we're hoping to have prayer at our normal time on Monday 12 to 1 um, we will send out everything through email and social media and all of that but we're hoping to have our prayer gathering from 12 to 1 and so plan on that uh, everything is back on schedule. Wednesday morning men's study, we'd love to have you there. If you're a man in our church, 6.30 to 7.30 here at my house in this room, actually. And then um, Wednesday night Bible study, uh, as we're going through the prayer course and learning how to pray uh, from 6 to 7.30 on Wednesday evening, anybody is welcome to come to that. It's a way to learn how to pray using the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, so we'd love to do that. And then the last thing is, we have a new staff member coming on staff at C3, and we're very, very excited about Ella Goforth. Uh, she's a college student at University of Memphis and is just passionate about Jesus and, and discipling the next generation of middle school and high school girls and helping them learn to follow Jesus in this particular cultural climate. And so 
Um, she actually begins today, um, even though we're not actually meeting together, but um, her whole role will be just meeting with students, uh, our female students, and seeking to uh, lead them closer and closer to Jesus. And so uh, when you see her at church, welcome her. And if you are a parent who has a female student in our church, um, get to know Ella. She's phenomenal. She's wonderful. And uh, we'll have more and more opportunities to hear from her in the coming days. But um, those are the announcements that I have for you. Okay, so I know that this is not the way that anybody wants to take in a sermon or anything like that. So this is going to be really short for your benefit and all the rest of it. And I want to make this as short as, as possible. But I do think I have something for you. So last week we talked about worship and how God calls us to worship. It's the second most commanded thing in the scriptures. God cares about our worship and who we worship. Uh, but one of the things I had to cut just due to time, and I didn't have time to talk about it, was God doesn't only care who we worship and that we worship him. He actually cares how we worship. And so he cares a ton about our posture in worship. There's all the, all, all the words in Hebrew for praising the Lord, all the things that he calls us to do when he says to praise him, worship him. All of them are attached to an action. And so in Psalm 56, you have Tauda, which is, to, to make a sacrifice or to give an offering. And so it's not just praise the Lord, but it's to praise him with sacrifice and offering, to do something that is genuinely a sacrifice. And then you have yada, which is the lifting of the hands. So it's praise the Lord, but it's connected to lifting the hands. Barak and Baruch, which is bowing down. And you have Shabak, which is not just sing, but it's shout. It's shout to the Lord. Zama, which is to sing or to play instruments. And then you have the halal, which is where you get hallelujah. That's celebrate, boast, rave. Like it's supposed to be like, inch, inch, inch. like it's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be that way. Like an actual celebration. Like don't just sing, but like go at it. And then tahia, which is to sing, dance, or praise. Uh, and so this is the idea of like dance before the Lord. This is that image you get of David dancing before the Lord when his wife gets so mad at him. Um, in Second Samuel, but uh, th this is the idea, like all of these words, like yes, praise the Lord, give him worship, but all of them are connected not just to singing, but they're all connected to a posture. They all shift and shape our posture. The Lord not only cares about who we worship, but how we worship as well. There's something in the posture for us. And I love that idea because I think we actually intuitively know this. If you experience joy in your life, normally you're ex expressing that some way with your posture. The other day I was at a um, Memphis Tigers game with some people from the church, which was so much fun, but we were down the entire game. Um, and then all of a sudden in the second half, we came back and took the lead. And as soon as it shifted from like down the entire game to taking the lead, Everybody where we were wasn't sitting there like, that's pretty good. It's a good time. Like, like they weren't doing that. They were like, sh you know, hands up, high-fiving, double high-fives, just shouting and shrieking. I lost my voice in the whole thing. And like their posture not only changed when the, the game changed, but their posture changed in their experience of those things. We understand this intuitively, that our posture actually matters in how we experience things. When things go really well for us and our teams win or whatever, our posture expresses how we feel. Our posture is attached to our heart. And our posture deeply matters, not just in those spaces, but it matters a ton in our worship. One of the most substantial ways that I remember that posture really, really matters is thinking back to my engagement to Rainey. Um, for the first three years before Rainey and I got engaged, when we were dating, uh, she always talked about wanting someone to photograph our engagement uh, whenever it happened. And so I just locked that away and had a photographer friend of mine come to the space where I was going to plan to ask her to marry me and to uh, take photos of the whole thing. And so this first picture here, we're on this beach in Evanston, Illinois, and it's, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. We're playing cards and just enjoying the beach, and I was nervously working up the energy and the nerve to ask her to marry me. But just notice the posture. Like, the posture is, like, it's super relaxed. I'm not vulnerable here. 
my life doesn't hang in the balance here. Like we're just playing a game of cards and everything's super relaxed. But then this next photo, like right here, you can kind of see it in the way that I'm leaning forward. You can definitely see it in her eyes. In some of these photos, like you can see right here down on one knee, everything in my life rests on what she chooses to say to my request. Hey, do you want to marry me? Will you marry me? Like my posture changed in a moment my entire life going from lying down to one knee. That's all that changed. My posture changed and then my whole life changed. And then this third picture, she thankfully said yes. Uh, and you see that she's excited. I'm thrilled and relieved that I finally got that done. I even knew, I thought she was gonna say yes, but it was just, it was still, there was something there. But my posture changed what we experienced. This went from a normal date to a life altering deal. And the only thing that shifted was my posture. I went from lying on my back to on one knee. And the only thing that shifted was my posture. And I think in a similar way, our posture before the Lord changes our experience with worship itself. And I think our posture before the Lord changes our experience with God himself. And this is why he calls us not just to worship him, but to worship him with all of our being. Not just some of our mouths or our praise or anything like that, but make sure that our, our bodies are actually worshiping him as well. I love what one of the commentators said on this idea of posture. He said, our physical posture serves to shape the posture of our heart as well. Kneeling is a sign of submission, but it also aids in producing humility. Lifting hands is a sign of offering, but it also aids in producing the attitude of offering up ourselves to God. We should use these biblical postures to our benefit when engaged in prayer and worship, both privately and together. Incorporating these various postures into our worship will help incline our hearts toward God in a new way. It will help us express our emotions toward God more fully and will increase the depth of our reverence toward God in prayer and in worship. Ignoring the examples and imperatives of scripture in regards to our posture and worship will lead to bad posture spiritually. It will keep us from worshiping fully with our whole person, mind, heart, will, and strength. The posture of our bodies during worship should indicate the posture of our hearts. And so my simple encouragement to you uh, and to me is during our worship to not just worship with our mouths when we sing, but also to worship with our bodies, to, to use those things to do that. I mean, Romans 12 says that, like, offer your life as a living, living sacrifice, a living worship sacrifice to the Lord, um, all of yourself before him, not just your words, but also your physical actions as well. And I believe very genuinely that what will take shape is like there will be a different experience for us inside of worship when we worship that particular way. And so I think this is why the Lord calls us not just to worship him, but to make sure that our bodies also worship him. So I'd love for us to finish uh, just by doing a simple prayer practice and it, it deals with our posture. And so the first is, it's, it's, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but it's uh, palms down on your legs here uh, and then palms up. And so during this space, uh, we're just going to do this for a couple of minutes, but we're going to practice the palms down of just just giving God everything that we have, all of our worries, all of our struggles, all of our frustrations, our complications, our um, complaints, everything, anything that you've got. The idea is like your hands are giving everything to Him, that you're, that you're just like, I can't handle that. You're just giving that all to Him. And so posture yourself that way. Find yourself in a comfortable space where you're seated and just have your hands palms down on your legs or on the armrest and just use this space you can close your eyes so take a minute and just give him all of your needs your requests your everything that you have and give those to him
And now turn your palms upward. And this is just a space where you're receiving and you're asking, asking the Lord to meet your needs. You just gave him all of the things that you're dealing with. And now you're just asking him, like, Lord, here's what I think that I need. I may not need it, but here's what I think that I need. So you're just taking some space to open your palms to receive. Asking from the Lord, Lord, I need these things from you. Here's what I want from you. And so take another minute and just ask from him everything that your mind comes to when you think of like, here's what I need in my life. Here's what I need from my family. Here's what I need for all these spaces. Take 60 seconds and ask him. Father, you've been kind to our church and just giving us a way that we can connect even when we can't be together. God, I pray for the people in our church that they would continue to see you as someone they can cast their cares on because you care for them and you love them. Or that they would continue to see you as the Father who gives good gifts to his sons and his daughters because that's who you are. Lord, that you would continue to form us into people who are not only worshipers of you, but experience this space with you that's powerful and rich because we not only worship you with our mouths, but our bodies and our posture is a space where we experience more and more surrender to you. And as we do that, we experience more and more life. So God, I pray that you would just form us and shape us into that. Bless our people this week. Lord, as we go back to school and work and all the rest of it, try and catch up on other things, God, I pray that we would find you present in our lives, seeking to, more than anything, probably just slow us down and help us to be uh, present and grateful for the space that we currently have. And so, Father, would you bless C3, would you bless our church and the families represented in it, and would you bring us back next week to be uh, just encouraging joyful together in jesus name amen all right i love y'all thank you so much for uh tuning in to this and we look forward to seeing you next week love you guys